Friends, thank you for tuning in to this telethon. Thank you for your care and love of our church and our historic sanctuary. In an age in which we speak a lot about mindfulness, I think of the power of our steeple, our clock, our bell, this historic and sacred space. They all cause us to pause, to stop, to reflect. Clocks and bells weren't only built into steeples to serve the public before the ages of watches and cell phones. They were built as a marker of time because God enters into the here and now, into this specific time and place, not just the amorphous hereafter. So when we take time to gather together as one body, which we all yearn to do again. We are reminded of the power of being the Christian community in the world. We're reminded of the power of stepping back from our week, of reflecting on what has happened and on praying for what will be. It is here that this historic space allows us to sing, to pray, to gather, to learn, to grow, and to be challenged. It is not just about a building, it's what this building enables. So friends, I invite you during this telethon to be generous and to give not just to a building, but to give to a building that enables God's work to happen in our lives and in our world. Thank you for all that you are and for all that you do for South Church. Thank you. There are three ways to donate to the Sanctuary Repair. You can give by phone by calling 978-494-0827. If you get our answering machine, leave your name and number and we'll call you right back. You can donate online by going to southchurch.com slash raise the roof and click on the Donate Now button. You can also text give to South Church space ceiling to 73256. Thank you for considering this worthy cause. Good evening, everyone. I'm Allison Shaw, and I want to welcome you to the Raise the Roof Telethon. Thank you for joining us this evening. As you can see, we're coming to you live from the sanctuary. This is the place that we've missed so much. Although we continue to be church without our building, this space is where we gather and greet our friends and neighbors and where so many memories have been made. Preparations for this renovation have already begun. Let's take a quick tour around the sanctuary. You can see all the extras have been removed from the space. All the Bibles and the books have been taken out. It's looking very sparse in here. The organ has been completely wrapped and protected and work is being done to prepare the attic for new insulation and flooring. It's a little echoey in here too, because there's not much in here. <laughs> We have a very exciting lineup of entertainment for you tonight. We look forward to the Joyal family competing against one another as they try to identify different objects that you can find at church. You'll get to test your musical knowledge along with our contestants in Name That Hymn. And make sure you stay tuned long enough to watch Dana and Alex compete head to head in Pastor Jeopardy as they test their Bible knowledge. 
Our goal tonight is to raise $75,000 to bridge the funding gap for our sanctuary sailing repair. If we reach this goal, we can get the project done debt free. We know this year has brought so many challenges. Any donation you can make will be greatly appreciated and no contribution is too small. Every little bit would help. If you find yourself in a position where you're unable to support this project, please know we hold everyone in our prayers as we navigate the year 2020 together. As you just saw, there are several ways to donate. You can either go online via our website, you can text to give, or call in your pledge. You will see these instructions on your screen often during the evening. Our phone line is limited, so if you get the voicemail, please leave a message, and one of our phone bank people will call you back. We're gonna begin our evening with what we already have in the bank. We've received $11,190 currently pledged. Thank you to everyone. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who's given, and we hope you enjoy the telethon. We certainly had a lot of fun putting this together. There are three ways to donate to the sanctuary repair. You can give by phone by calling 978 494 0827. If you get our answering machine, leave your name and number and we'll call you right back. You can donate online by going to southchurch.com slash raise the roof and click on the donate now button. You can also text give to South Church space ceiling to 73256. Thank you for considering this worthy cause. Hi, I'm Wayne Shaw, and welcome to our Congregational Life Challenge, a game we're calling Whip It. Let's welcome David Strong, Colleen Ford, and John Wiggins. The object of the game is fairly simple. Who can whip a half a cup of cream the fastest? To finish, you need to be able to hold your bowl with the whipped cream upside down without any cream falling out. The person who accomplishes this the quickest wins. Good questions. We're here with Al Joyle and Tim Morzerski from the Facilities Ministries, and they're going to talk a little bit about why we're doing the uh, sanctuary roof repair and uh, what will take place, how we're going to do it. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the sanctuary. It's been a long time since we've been together and uh, really looking forward to 
being back in worship with you. So a little bit of, of why we're doing this project. Um, the ceiling has uh, had cracks in it for a long time. We're probably in excess of 10 years at this point. And over the, over the last 10 years, those cracks have continued to worsen. We've had an architectural engineering firm um, do an annual audit to inspect these cracks, to give us their assessment, is it still a safe space? And their recommendation is that we need to replace the ceiling um, so we don't have a catastrophic failure of the entire ceiling coming down. So we'll, we'll show some pictures in a little while, but um, there are cracks all over the ceiling, under the balcony, um, and really what that represents is the, the plaster is separating away from the infrastructure above the ceiling, and eventually that could just let go and the entire thing could come down. Can you tell us what happened since uh, annual meeting in June? Yes, um, since June, um, Betsy Davis has led the charge to help us look at uh, four different contractors, get bids from those contractors, and uh, level those bids to help us uh, choose the right one. We've talked with uh, other uh, churches that have used these contractors, and so we're ready to select a contractor. So on Monday night, we'll uh, propose to the council the contractor that we want to go with, and uh, from there we'll work on a contract, and um, then the work should start, and it'll probably take us about, uh, the expectation is 12 weeks from the day the project starts. So, Do you know lots how? been going on. So, so when, what, what's the date when you're going to talk to the council? So that's Monday night, the uh, August 24th. Yep. So from there, we'll move forward. Um, the big pieces that will uh, take place first is scaffolding. So that takes about two weeks to set up because, uh, as you know, you know the ceiling's up there about 40 feet high. So we need scaffolding throughout. Um, and the uh, balcony ceilings will be repaired as well. Um, the one on the right is ready to fall down any minute. So uh, that, that one will uh, definitely be addressed. And uh, as part of the project, there is some old knob and tube wiring that's uh, still going to the lights in the balcony ceilings, and that will be uh, replaced as well. And uh, part of the job will be to work up in the attic, if you will, to uh, kind of firm up the joists. And um, when we take off the old floorboards, we'll take out all the old insulation, and new insulation will be put in to get us to a higher uh, R value. And uh, then new uh, flooring will be put down to uh, firm up the joists. And then they'll start working on the ceiling. Yeah, that, that attic space is a key part of this project. You know, the idea of that new subfloor is to stiffen the structure. Uh, so the, the church moves quite a bit and that, uh, that creates some of the, uh, or, or contributes to some of the cracking that we have in the ceiling. So really uh, getting that work done up above um, I would also add, as Tim mentioned, two weeks to, to do just the staging, just to stage this entire space. We've hired Andover Organ Company to protect the organ. Uh, they didn't want to entrust that to any contractor to do that uh, the right way, so that'll be completely sealed off. Um, so again, another piece of prep work before we you know, put the first screw, uh, screw in the ceiling, we have to do all this prep work that's gonna take you know, weeks. Uh, it's probably a third or a quarter of the time of the entire time to do the project. Um, they'll have a, a, they'll wrap the staging in plastic to have a negative air situation in here so the, the dust doesn't go throughout the church, in theory. Uh, we hope that that is the case, but as, as people know, dust tends to uh, go where it wants to go. But uh, we're going to make every effort to try to keep the church as clean as possible. Uh, when that's, that being said, when the, church, when the project is done, there'll be a full cleaning of, of this space, um, you know, cleaning all these pews and, and the, the carpets and so forth. Um, just to add to that, on the, uh, to keep the rest of the church clean, one of the things that we're going to do is uh, have some plastic walls built so that uh, dust can only go so far, if you will. So picture the narthex area, you know, there'll be a plastic wall down at the bottom of the stairs or somewhere in that area so that dust won't, won't go any farther. And there'll be a little door there because once a day somebody will have to come in to be able to let the workers in through the front door. So their access will be very limited within the church. So when they repair the plaster, 
Can you describe how they're going to do it? Sure. Yeah. So they're going to use this uh, fiberglass mesh and they're going to cover the entire ceiling with that mesh. And through that mesh, they're going to drive these plastic screws, if you will, uh, through the mesh, through the plaster and into the uh, structure up above, thereby pulling the ceiling in tight and making it super strong. So there'll be hundreds of these plastic anchors going through the ceiling. And then they'll, they'll do a skim coat on top of that. And then there'll be two coats of paint to, uh, to make it beautiful again. So has the contractor done this before? Great question. And they have done a church in Boston. Um, and the name escapes me, but they've done a lot of churches. Um, King's Chapel, I think it was. That's it. King's yeah. Chapel. Yeah. So um, definitely experienced. It's not a new method by any means. Um, it's been done at a lot of different churches. And I, and the one, other, yeah, the other point, sorry, the other point is that the architectural firm that has inspected the ceiling and has actually given the plans for the, for the project has worked with this contractor in the past. So they know each other. Um, I, I think our, our engineering firm is very happy with the choice. I think they, they respect their work and they, they feel really confident about that contractor. They both work together on, at King's Chapel. And the other uh, nice thing about this method is um, it'll make it look um, like it looks today. So the, the mesh will kind of go right in the same shape, if you will. So it's very uh, maybe architecturally pleasing or something. So that appeals to a lot of people. Yeah. So maybe we should go upstairs and see the part that I believe most people don't see. We can take a look at the uh, roof of the sanctuary just to see from above. Yeah. Sounds great. So we're in a place most people haven't been, and that's in the attic of the sanctuary. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what's going to happen up here? Yeah, sure. So uh, this, I don't know if you can see the flooring, but all this old flooring, this planking is going to get ripped out of here. And the insulation is going to get taken out of here. Um, we are going to have uh, more insulation put in, so the R value, value is going to be much higher here in the attic, which should increase the efficiency of heating the sanctuary. And then a brand new subfloor will go down that'll, uh, as we said earlier, will stiffen this floor, make the whole structure uh, more solid and uh, less likely to any future cracking. You can't see through the insulation, but if you could, you would see that uh, each one of the uh, joists is not, you know, a consistent uh, uh, distance apart. So it's going to be quite a job for the contractor. So they have to take all the insulation out of here and then put in insulation and put sheets of plywood on top. So it'll be a lot of intricate cuts, which... Uh, you know, a lot of work to do to uh, get the job done right. So we'll have that uh, engineering firm we're working with here uh, once a week to check on the job. They'll mock up uh, what we expect to be done everywhere. So a sample and then the contractors will do the work and the work will be checked. So a lot of detail and um, a lot of work by uh, Betsy Davis and uh, Andy Bryan uh, will to follow up uh, uh, throughout this whole job. Yeah, also from, you know, we mentioned timing of this project. Another good aspect of that is that uh, we're standing up here in the attic on a relatively mild day. Uh, I can feel that it's, it's pretty warm up here. Uh, there's no way you could do this project in the summer. Uh, a 90 degree day would be intolerable up here. So doing this in the fall uh, is, is really perfect for the, the team that's going to be up here doing this work. You'll also uh, see in, in some photos up here that we have um, equipment that's tied into the solar array. So we'll be working with that company to ensure that that equipment doesn't um, suck in any dust or doesn't negatively, isn't negatively impacted by any of the work that we're having done up here. There are three ways to donate to the sanctuary repair. You can give by phone by calling 978-494-0827. If you get our answering machine, leave your name and number and we'll call you right back. You can donate online by going to southchurch.com slash raise the roof and click on the donate now button. You can also text give to South Church space ceiling to 732 Five, six. Thank you for considering this worthy cause.
Welcome to the Razor with Telethon, and this is a game we're calling What Is It? And uh, for this is the facilities challenge, and we have the Joyles here today. So we have Al and Amy and Matt. Uh, we're missing Haley, who starts her college career this week. We just wish you well, Haley, if you're uh, listening now, but uh, congratulations. All right, you guys ready? Ready. Yeah. Okay, so the idea is I'll show you some pictures, and uh, you guys can ring in. And so the way you ring in is just raise your hands. Uh, and first person to guess it correct gets a point. Ready for the first one? Yes. Okay, here we go. L. It's a cross. Okay, where is it? It is in the deacon's room. No. Anybody else want to guess? Go Sanctuary. Oh. Nope. Um. It is in the uh, room, left side of the church, uh, used as a secondary prayer space, and I'm not remembering the formal name of it. All right, I'm going to give you that, Matt. It's the chapel. Yes. Chapel, yeah. I'm actually in service this week. <laughs> uh, all right, ready for the next one? Ready. Oh. Can't say I've been to South Church since this was installed. <laughs> uh, where the heck is that? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Ed, out back. Uh, nope. Okay, Amy. Is it just outside the entrance, outside the office? That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, it's the uh, fire alarm. Logo. Ooh. Very uh, good. It's a bad picture, but. <laughs> oh. Amy? In the hallway outside of the kitchen in the stairwell? What floor? I'm thinking it was in the stairwell um, going up from the uh, basement. Not, no. Between the first and second floor? It's it's actually in the third, but yeah. Oh, oh, no, I didn't know that. I would give her that. <laughs> <laughs> give her half a point. Half a point. All right. I, back, of the, back of the church, the stairwell down to the youth space. Nope. No. Oh, no, no, no. I know where it is. Uh. Matt? Kitchen entrance? Nope. Nope. It's the archway in the front of the church. Oh, come on, Amy. <laughs> Not too many places left. <laughs> Thinking the entrance by the office. That's correct. <sighs> you just say the entrance to the office for every question. <laughs> it's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, 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 I know. Matt was first. Uh, Kitchen? No. Nope. Uh, some pump down in the youth space. Nope. <laughs> so this is a. Uh, oh. These are for the circulator fans that run in the the sanctuary and uh, that are in the. So if you're on the kitchen side, like upper deck in the sanctuary, if you come down those stairs. Huh. Hmm. It's right, getting Wayne. harder. Yeah, we we need an easy one. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, I know. I know. L. Ceiling in the narthex. That's correct. <sighs> Good thing that makes us feel good about the time you've been spending there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, oh, man. Oh, I know. I know. No? It's the uh, entrance to the bell up in the steeple. That's right. It's the bell. Cool. <clears throat> All right. Go ahead, Matt. On um, the communal hangout space between the offices on the left side of the church. Nope. Is it, is it in Fellowship Hall on one of those rolling displays? Nope. Got a light up at the top. He's got light. Pump, pump. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <clears throat> ah. 
Very nice. That. Narthex? Yep. All right. So this is for points. I'm just going to keep firing them. Oh. Uh, oh it's deceptively small. <clears throat> wow. That's in the youth space? Yeah. Did we have no one on our team from the youth board? Oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> like, the wall's red. <laughs> All right. There we go. I do remember that wall being red. Go oh, ahead. I know. I know. Uh, center fold of the sanctuary ceiling. Yes. Nice. Nice. Nicely done. I have everybody tied, Allison. You're the same. <clears throat> All right. Yes. All right. Here we go. Matt. Oh. Whose ball? Youth space. That's it. Oh, that's the only one I had. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, -oh. uh chapel. Yep. <clears throat> this one's tricky. Was this taken on the mission trip? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> tricky. Shed. The shed? Nope. Nope. Oh, that's where I was going. Mm. Looks like it is a peak. I don't know. I'm getting it. Oh, oh, I know. I know. It's the kitchen ca uh, uh, countertop. Exactly. Oh, it is. The butcher board. <clears throat> oh. Nice. Nice. The scale was off. That's why. Yeah. Uh, oh. 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 One of the organ pipes. Right? Yeah. He's very musically inclined. Which organ pipe? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, well, it's not youth center. Um, I'll take a crack. Okay. Couch in Dana, oh. couch in Dana's office. <laughs> nope. Amy? One of the cushions in the sanctuary. Yes. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh. oh. Amy? Is it the end of a pew in the sanctuary? No. Then. No? Oh, bad. Uh, front of the pulpit. Right. Nice. nice. Al. One of the chandeliers. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Good, Amy. It's not in the sanctuary where the balcony hangs. Can you be more specific? I feel like it's um, those turrets are coming down from the balcony underneath. Like yes. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. So the handle is to hold on to so you can get leverage when you turn the clock. God, that's fabulous. <laughs> just like I was thinking, just as I was going to explain it. <clears throat> oh. Okay. Oh. Go ahead, Al. Maybe Jen's office. Can you back that out just a little bit? Just kidding. How do you feel about Chicago? Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's the sign right above the sump pump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's definitely Proverbs. Um, it's good, rec good recollection. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Youth space? No. no. It's uh it's right in front of the classrooms. Oh the right. Was mm. <clears throat> right. that in the last ten years? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hi folks. Hope you enjoyed our little family treasure hunt around South Church. Um a home for all of us. Please join us in this effort for the Raise the Roof Sanctuary Telethon. Thank you. Hi, we are Duncan and Polly Pyle, and this has been our church home for over 38 years. We first walked through the doors in September of 1982 as newlyweds. 
Um, and since that time, it has become an integral part of our, our family and our church life. Our children, Margaret and Thomas, were both baptized here, confirmed here. Margaret was married here. And our granddaughters were recently baptized yep. here. Yeah. Our and, uh, granddaughters actually were here and have participated in the mission, or the uh, children's uh, sermon at times. And uh, it's fun to see the uh, circle of life um, taking hold. I know that... Uh, our daughter and son-in-law would love to be uh, up in this area and, and members of this church. In addition, uh, Duncan and I renewed our vows on our 25th mm -hmm. wedding anniversary right here <laughs> in this spot. Um, we miss you all and we wish the best for you and we will continue supporting South Church. Always. My name is Shaw Lyons. I have enjoyed being a historian here at South Church. We are in the fourth meeting house of the South Parish of Andover. This fourth house was built in 1860 at the sum of $19,481.34. The builders were Abbott and Clement, who were members of the church and also were buried out back in the cemetery. They worked with a, uh, the architect, his name is John Stevens, and he built about 113 uh, congregational churches. When this church went in, the only bit of ornamentation is what you might see on the ceiling and including the medallion in the middle of the room. It was uh, considered very, uh, congregationalists were very modest and very humble with ornamentation. Uh, don't forget the Puritans were purifying themselves of the trappings of the church. So you basically end up with a white box with a steeple on top. The only other additions to the sanctuary of great uh, change was lighting was installed in 1899 um, and the stained glass windows were installed in 1901. Uh, other than that, this is pretty much the same church that it's been for since 1860. <laughs> Coincidentally, we were only, only other time that the church has been closed for a period of time was during the 1918 pandemic, where the church was closed through the summer <clears throat> on four different Sundays, and the, all the churches in town sort of rotated who was going to carry on and do the services, and often they were just held in front of the buildings. A hundred years ago, the, we have a pandemic a hundred years ago. We have a need to, believe it or not, replace the ceiling. What had happened? Well, apparently in the 60 years since the uh, building had been built, the roof leaked a lot and in various areas. And the plaster was literally falling down during church services. So they realized that they really had to deal with this um, and, and solve the problem of both roof and fixing the ceiling. At the time, that the, the cost to repair the ceiling was $19,000. Now, you guys might not know this, but your Converse Chuck Taylors that you're wearing, Mr. Marquise Mills Converse was a member of South Church. And I'm going to read a little bit of a letter that he wrote asking people in the community for help to uh, raise the funds. Uh, he wrote to Mr. Charles Ward. Ward is the namesake for the Ward Reservation, um, enclosing a check for the bill to cover hay in the pasture, and then says, at the same time, I am wondering whether you occupy your Andover residence long enough each year so that you would feel inclined to help us out a little on South Church finances. I was unfortunate enough to be elected chair of the finance committee for 1920. At the time I tackled the job, the church was in wretched condition and really a disgrace to the cause that it represented and also to the community. An estimate showed that in order to put the church in first class condition, it would require $19,000 and I tackled the job. I need $2,700 more. I dislike to go off the committee without cleaning up this balance 
as I am looking for either 27 men to contribute $100 each or 54 men to contribute 50 each. And I am hoping that you will be interested to be one of the 27, if not one of the 54. Reverend Bigelow wrote in his annual, this is his annual report, but he wrote, the one great achievement this year has been the renovation of our house of worship. For many years, the swaying of our tall spire in the, in the gales that sweep our exposed position has racked and cracked our building until the plastered walls and ceiling were a discredit and a shame to us. But the huge cost involved in the necessary repairs frightened us all into paralysis until Mr. M. M. Converse, supported by the Board of Finance, started a campaign to raise $11,000, the least amount of repairs that could be proposed. But the people responded so well to this courageous leadership that the assessors went forward to the extent of nearly twice the proposed mark, providing a new fireproof roof, new painting outside and inside, a new floor and plush tracker for the auditorium, and immaculate fresco over walls and ceiling. The tidy sum of $19,000, $114, has been spent for these things, and the deep feelings of satisfaction that fill hundreds of hearts from Sunday to Sunday in our services of worship seem to justify the expenses. When we observe closely the places in the ceiling where cracks may develop and find after each racking storm, no sign of any strain, we take a deep satisfaction in the good judgment of our assessors, who first made sure that the roof and steeple should be as rigid as trusses and bolts could make them, in order that none of the decorative work should be in vain. Thus did their work express the spiritual purpose of this church. I think it was very deep understanding that they took that the church in its 60 years had never undergone such a, a renovation and such, at such an expense. Um, and he holds it very dear that the members of this community and this church stepped up to the challenge of meeting the goal to be able to provide and fix a, such a ceiling that it would last for another 100 years. Uh, praise be to God, and please contribute to the campaign for this year. Thank you. There are three ways to donate to the Sanctuary Repair. You can give by phone by calling 978-494-0827. If you get our answering machine, leave your name and number, and we'll call you right back. You can donate online by going to southchurch.com slash raise the roof and click on the donate now button. You can also text give to South Church space ceiling to 73256. Thank you for considering this worthy cause. Hey everybody, it's Kathleen coming live from the sanctuary. We are so grateful that you are tuning in and watching all the fun games. We hope that you enjoyed everything you saw. The chat's been live and fun. People, people telling us where things were or didn't know where things were. So if you haven't pledged, now is a great time to pledge. So we look forward to receiving that. And we have so many more fun games to come. We have the finance committee is going to play a game and... Name that hymn, I think, is coming up next. That'll be a good one. And of course, the ending of all endings, Dana and Alex, head to head on Pastor Jeopardy. Our phone bank is humming and live, and we want to thank everybody that's picking up the phone. Rachel, Tim, Cindy, Amelia, Erica, Jen, Eileen. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for calling in. And again, if you haven't pledged, please give us a call. We're ready for your phone and your money. So bring it in. And now our tote board update. Da -da 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 -da. 23,200. <laughs> so here we go. We need 50,000 more. Let's do this. Let's do this. Thank you. There are three ways to donate to the Sanctuary Repair. You can give by phone by calling 
949-494-0827. If you get our answering machine, leave your name and number and we'll call you right back. You can donate online by going to southchurch.com slash raise the roof and click on the Donate Now button. You can also text Give to South Church space ceiling to 73256. Thank you for considering this worthy cause. I'm Steve Longo, and welcome to Name That Hymn. Uh, we have three guest contestants with us tonight, and they are going to do their best to try to guess hymns based on a series of clues that I will read, and then Kathy Meyer will play the hymns once they have been appropriately determined by the contestants. So, our contestants tonight are Graham Long, Lori Sirota, and Bob Tigelar, representing three generations of South Church. Uh, of <laughs> three or more. <laughs> or more. Or more. All right. So, I will, read the, I will read the clue, then the contestants will be given the opportunity to decide if they know the hymn and how few notes it will take them to correctly identify it. Um, we will rotate the first bid from uh, among the three contestants. The words to this hymn are from a prayer written by the headmaster of the Winchester College Choristers School in 1860 for the safety of a student who was preparing to set sail for America. A century later, the U.S. Marine Band played it at the conclusion of the burial service for President John F. Kennedy at Arlington National Cemetery. It was also sung at the funeral of President Franklin D. Roosevelt. All right. Graham, you're up first. Can you name that tune and how many notes? Oh, I guess. All right. Lori, can you name that hymn and how many notes? Can't name it. All right. Bob, 1860, that was when you were in college, so uh, you must know this. <laughs> oh, she has right. I was, I was listening to the... To the uh, telegraph then, or I, maybe that was even before the telegraph. Anyway, can um, you name that him? I can. I can name. Um, uh, I can name that in six notes. Six notes, and the other two have passed. So, all right, all right Kathy, can we give Mr. Tigalar six notes? Uh, Eternal Father, strong to save. That is correct, and that is outstanding. Wow. Three points to Bob. Yeah, nice. All right, all right. Hey, hey, Bob. Yeah. Did you, did you hear about the banjo player who got a PhD from Yale? Oh, no, my alma mater. No, where? I, I I didn't either. I don't think he exists. <laughs> okay. Next round. <laughs> The author of this hymn was born in London in 1732, a child of a slave trader. After his mother's death, he joined his father aboard ship where he witnessed cruel and harsh treatment towards the natives of West Africa who had been forced from their homes and sold as slaves. During a severe storm at sea, he, he prayed to be saved. Please let me finish the clue. <laughs> And when seas eventually calmed, he started his transformation to a new lifestyle filled with grace. Eventually, he abandoned the life of the slave trading seas. He heard God's call to ministry and was ordained into the Church of England, where he went on to write many hymns in our repertoire. Lori, you get first crack at this one. First bit. I'm going to name that hymn in four notes. All right. Bob, can you can you go better than four? Uh, I can do a lot better. 
I'm going to say I can do it in. Um, I want to hear Kathy play, so I'm going to say I'm going to do it in two notes. All right, Graham, can you beat two notes? One note. All right, Graham is the winning bid at one note. Kathy, can we play one note of this tune? Here we go. All right. Amazing grace. Graham, you are the winner, and you have uh, just scored three points for yourself. Great work, everybody. Great work. All right, here's the next round. In the 1997 film by James Cameron, Titanic, you can hear this last hymn played by a string quartet as the ship sank into the frigid waters below. Several years earlier, the words were whispered from the lips of President William McKinley as he lay dying from an assassin's bullet. Both incidents show that in troubled times, we long for the assurance of the ever-present strength of God and that God may always be near to us. Bob, you get the first bid on this one. Can you name that hymn? Um, I can name. Uh, I can name it in no notes. Whoa! All right, Kathy, can you play zero no. notes of this hymn? So you know, I do have a master's degree in this. It's kind of too bad I can't use put it to good use. But <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh, that was beautiful. How'd I do? That just, that just oh. right. Kathy, that was great restraint. That, that, that nailed it for me. All right, Bob. Name it back. Thanks. The name of that hymn is Nearer My God to Thee. And that is correct. And Bob gets another three points. Next round. Places in the Heart was a movie written and directed by Robert Benton. In this film... Sally Field plays a widow in Texas during the Depression who wages an uphill battle to save the family farm. Playing a key role in helping the widow are a blind white man and an impoverished black man. Which hymn is featured in this film? Clue, it's not about a farm, but close. Graham, you get the first bid. Yeah. I can name that hymn in eight notes. Okay, Lori, can you beat that? Um, I don't know. I'm going to go for six. <laughs> Bob, can you identify that hymn in less than six notes? Uh, no. Name that tune, Lori. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to give Kathy a chance to play. Oh, thanks, Lori. Here we go. Six notes. Gosh, um, do I get points if I sing it? Na, 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 <laughs> we need, we need the title. We need the title. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the title. If you keep singing it, you might come up with it. You've got ten seconds. Sing it in your head until you get yeah, to the, until you get to it. Um, I don't know the name. Sorry. All right then. What happens in this case is you don't get points, but the other two each get one point for your for your incorrect answer. Um, Graham, do you know what this is? Just for uh, just for wrapping it up. I'm you afraid don't. I don't. All right, Kathy, will you identify that hymn for us? I can tell. It I, is I, in. I, oh, do you have it, Bob? Yes, I come to the garden. Um, That's what it's. Yeah. yeah. the hymn in which God's first name is identified. Did you know that? It's Andy walks with me. Andy talks with me. God's first name is Andy. Oh. Who knew? Bad. That's why they're called hymns. <laughs> okay. Next round. <laughs> Samuel Francis Smith wrote the lyrics to this hymn in 1831 while a student at the Andover Theological Seminary in Andover, Mass, right up the hill from us. His friend, the famous church music composer Lowell Mason, 
had asked him to translate the lyrics in some German school songbooks into English or to write new lyrics for the same tunes. The melody of God Save the Queen from Muzio Clemente Symphony No. 3, also called The Great National, caught Smith's attention at the time. Rather than translating lyrics from the German, he wrote his own American patriotic hymn to the melody in less than 30 minutes. Laura, you get the first bid on this. Um, I'm going to go with four notes. All right. Bob, can you beat four notes? I cannot. Graham, can you beat Laurie's bid of four notes? I can take it in three notes. Oh, Laurie, do you want to outbid that? Yeah, I'm going to go with two. All right. Ooh. Graham? I can, uh, I can take it in zero. Oh. oh. All right, Kathy, would you play zero notes of this tune? Here we go. Oh, I missed that. Could you play it again? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. One more time. Here we go. Couldn't hear that? Okay. All right. Graham, what do you got? America. It is. It is. So three more points for Graham. <laughs> All right. Uh. Next up, this hymn first appeared in Hymns for Saints Day and other hymns in 1864. The text originally had 11 stanzas and began with the words, thy saints, which were later changed to the saints. It is commonly heard at South Church on the first Sunday of November, as well as for funerals and memorial services. Bob, you get the first bid on this one. Uh, two notes. Two notes. Graham, can you beat Bob's bid of two notes? I can do it in one note. Lori, can you beat that bit of... Oh, Lori says she can do it in zero notes. Whoa. I'm waiting, Kathy. Feeling confident. Okay, All right. Kathy. <laughs> oh, that's just beautiful. That's just Excellent. beautiful. Yep. Lori. That's the best playing I've done all day. I, I, believe, I believe it is for all the saints. It is correct, and you are on the board with three points. <laughs> It's lovely. You know, banjos out of music, what the Etch-A-Sketch is to art. So. <laughs> <laughs> it may surprise you. Okay, we're on to the next round. It may surprise you that this Christmas carol was written by a Unitarian minister, poetically depicting the events surrounding Jesus' nativity. Edmund Sears received his theological training at the Harvard Divinity School in 1837 and spent his latter years pastoring small Unitarian churches in Wayland, Lancaster, and Western Massachusetts. Perhaps these angelic towns in our great state inspired him to ponder the social implications of the angel's message, the importance of achieving peace and goodwill toward all, especially in times of unrest. I can name that hymn in seven notes. Lori, can you beat seven notes? I'm going to try. I'm going to go for five. All right. Bob, can you beat Lori's bit of five? Um, four. All right. All right, Bob, you get, <laughs> you get four notes. And they may not be the first four of the tune. Pat, Kathy can just pick out any four notes from the tune. <laughs> how, how about these four? Is that, they don't have to be in any order, right? <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> All right. Here's four notes. Here we go. It came upon a midnight clear. It is correct. Oh. It is correct. Oh. Nice. And no Thanksgiving service would be complete without the singing of this German hymn written shortly after the Thirty Years' War by the Reverend Martin Rinkart. He was the only surviving clergyman in his town of Eilenburg, Saxony, which was so crowded with refugees and so ravaged with plague and, and pestilence, famine and fury that often 50 to 100 funerals were held each day. When news finally arrived that the peace of Westphalia had ended the great and terrible war, a decree was circulated ordering Thanksgiving services to be held in every church. 
ministers were requested to preach on the text, Now bless ye the Lord of all, who everywhere doeth great things. He was so moved by the thought of this text that he wrote these words for his own thanksgiving hymn. Oh. You get the opening bit on this one. You say me? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, shoot. I thought I had it. Um, I'll go with five. All right, Bob, can you beat Laurie's opening bit of five notes? I don't think so. All right. Graham, can you beat Laurie's bit of five notes? I think I can do four. Ooh. All right, Laurie, do you want to counter that? Um, go for it, Laurie, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with three. All right, Graham, can you do better than three? You got me, Laurie. Yeah. All right. It's all I you. Could, You're I right. could be giving you a point easily. <laughs> all right, Kathy, let us hear three notes of this tune. Three. Three notes, here it comes. So now thank we all our God. Yes, you are right, and <laughs> yes. you have scored again. Final round. Julia Ward Howe received a grand total of $5 for writing the lyrics to this hymn, published as the Glorious Civil War Battle Song. After witnessing a parade of soldiers singing the catchy tune, a visiting friend, the Reverend James Freeman Clark of Boston, turned to Ms. Howe and said, why don't you write some decent words to this tune? Bob Tigelar, you are up first. Can you name that hymn? The so Civil that. War, Steve. Is it, is it possible that they were alive during the Civil War? <laughs> Bob was a veteran at that point. <laughs> Gosh, you guys, really uh, bad. Okay, I can, um, I can do that. I can. I think I can name that hymn in two notes. Oh, two notes, Graham. Can you beat Bob's opening bit of two notes? No, I pass. Laurie, can you I do can, it? I cannot. No. All right, Bob, you're up at bat. Kathy, let's have two notes. Two notes, here we go. Uh, that would be the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory. And that is correct, and you have scored again. Here we go. Wayne and Allison Shaw for the final scores. Lori has six points. Graham has seven points. And Bob is the winner with 13 points. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you all. Thank you all for participating. <laughs> and good night. And we'll see you all next time. Oh, thank you, Steve. Right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. There are three ways to donate to the Sanctuary Repair. You can give by phone by calling 978-494-0827. If you get our answering machine, leave your name and number and we'll call you right back. You can donate online by going to southchurch.com slash raise the roof and click on the Donate Now button. You can also text Give to South Church, space ceiling, to 73256. Thank you for considering this worthy cause. Hi, my name is Alex McClintic, and my favorite thing to do at church is Sunday school because I love learning about Jesus and his te teachings and how kind he is to everyone. Secondly, I love singing in the choir because I just love singing in general and filling people with joy when I sing. Finally, my, my, finally, I love greeting everyone in church and meeting new people.
Hi, I'm David McClintock. Um, my favorite thing about the church and the sanctuary in particular is, is the music. Uh, I sing in the sanctuary choir. I've sung in many church choirs going back to my youth. And uh, Kathy Meyer does a terrific job. She's a wonderful pianist. She's a wonderful organist. She's a wonderful singer and, and mainly a conductor of the choir. Hi, I'm Wayne Shaw, and I'm here with Jim McQuaid and Dennis Ford and, uh, from the Finance Ministry. And we're talking about sort of the finances associated with the Sanctuary Repair. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Nice to be here. So the first question is, why should everybody be contributing to the Sanctuary Telethon? Why we should contribute? Um, it's a place we love, right? We all feel many things in 2020. Um, I think among all them, displaced is probably one that many of us feel a lot of. Um, this is kind of, this is home. It's a spiritual home. It's a physical home. Um, and uh, I'm excited to give. Uh, I know many others are excited to give to repair it, the place we love, so that when we can safely get back together, we get back together. Um, what a beautiful moment that'll be. So, Dennis, you presented at uh, the special congregational meeting in June. What was decided then, and, and what did we agree to? Well, I think in part of the, the original presentation and the proposal that Jim and I put forward um, didn't involve any fundraising. Uh, we anticipated using um, some, we're anticipating some operational overrides this year um, based on a number of factors. And, but the congregation didn't want to use those revenues and also wanted to do this debt free. So uh, as opposed to that particular proposal that we would have gone forward without debt or without raising additional funds, the congregation wanted to take th that money off the table. Uh, that was going to be an operational override and uh, wanted to look at, you know, raising the funds to close the gap. The fund, the congregation supported the project with a unanimous vote. Um, and out of that came your work, Wayne, and with your colleagues, uh, with um, Kathy and Allison, in putting together this effort to uh, close the gap that we have. And um, that's how we came about. Jim, uh, like Dan said, where is the money coming from for the repair? So great question. Um, you know, we're really fortunate where um, kind of anchoring the financials to cover the costs. Um, we received two incredibly generous uh, donations that in total uh, approximately about $181,000, you know, from two families. We really look forward to, to uh, as this work is completed, you know, celebrating and, 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 and finding a way to, to, to thank those wonderful gifts. Um, we're also fortunate where, um, you know, uh, operating thoughtfully and building up some financial reserves for the building reserve. Um, you know, we have an additional $90,000 that we're able to, um, to pull from building reserves for this obvious building repair. So the, the, those two numbers combined kind of, you know, get us more than two thirds of the way there. You know, what we're, what we're trying to address is how do we, how do we solve that last, that last third, uh, less than a third, thankfully. Um, and that's kind of coming back to right the the congregational meeting. Um, God, what a testament to the the power of the congregation to hang in for three straight hours, <laughs> you know, and then at the end of three straight hours, unanimously support this. Um, but in, in doing so, communicating clearly, you know, the two goals is you know we we, we want to do this absent um, dipping into you know the operating reserves into that rainy day fund. Um, if twenty twenty is it's a lot of rain in 2020. And so keeping that rainy day fund makes sense. Um, and then also, uh, again, the credit to the congregation, the fact that we're debt free is amazing, right? Um, as a UCC church, we, you know, there is no parent organization providing funding. Um, every member of our congregation should be incredibly proud. Um, this congregation is funded by this congregation, right? It is, it is the work that each one um, puts forth. And, and the resources that each person and each family provides that makes all of this possible. So um, it's a huge testament that we are currently debt-free and the success of this fundraiser um, 
you know, we believe the success of this fundraiser should allow us to finance the entire project on a debt-free basis, which would be amazing. Dennis, I'll give you the last question. Uh, what are we asking for today? Well, uh, we're asking to raise $75,000, which I think it's been mentioned. Um, and there's a couple of options. So in terms of when we do congregate back in into the uh, sanctuary, you have a couple of choices. One, you can buy a hard hat. <laughs> That's right. That would be appropriate where if we don't get the project done. Other than that, um, we can all make donations and hit this $75,000 number and, you know, bring this project home. And, and when we're able to safely open it from, you know, the, the COVID and virus perspectives that we will have a secure, safe building that we can go into and enjoy and enjoy everyone's company and, and our worship. Uh, yeah. so hopefully I would rather not see you <laughs> and, but in some other bonnet of your choice or not, um, but anyway, so uh, hopefully you will all participate and help us hit the goal. Yes, let's succeed here. Make it a hard hat free <laughs> congregation. Thank you both for all you've done. We really appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Good evening. Welcome to The Price is Right with our friends from the Finance Ministry. Tonight's contestants are Jim McQuaid, Dennis Forg, and Shar Lyons. Here's how the game will work. I will show you an item you would find at church. You'll write down what you think it would cost to replace that item. The person closest to the price without going over wins the point. Any questions? Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> All right, then. Let's begin. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. Has everyone got a guess? Sure. Yes. Okay. All show right. us your point. Your number. Oh, I see. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You all went over. No points. No points. I guess we're 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 talking we have a cheap Bible. Didn't Goodness. you guys buy these when we bought them in Mass? <laughs> That's Goodness. what I'm thinking. I'm thinking retail. <clears throat> we find the Bible so valuable <laughs> that we can't <laughs> believe it. It's only ten. I, I don't want a Bible unless I pay thirty bucks for it. <laughs> All right, ready for the next one? Sure. Oh. Oh. Now is that including the stole? Good question. No. Mm. Used or new? All of these will be new. <laughs> Wholesale or retail? <laughs> I, whatever Kathy told me. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going thrifting with Dana or? <laughs> no thrifting. All right. Everyone got their gas? Yep. Okay, what do you got? <laughs> Did you say two dollars, Dennis? <laughs> two dollars. Yeah. I went low. So, what is the actual price? Oh my goodness! We off. So that's a point for Jim. <laughs> wow! I, I have purchased so many of those in my life. <laughs> what would it cost just to dry clean them? Uh, all right. Okay, how do we feel about music stands? I am lost. Who's squeaking? <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> I'm squeaking. Okay, we're All ready. Right, everyone good? What do you got? And the actual price? Ooh. 45 for me. Point for Dennis. That's for Dennis. <laughs> well done. They're surprisingly expensive. Yes. Yes. Next item. So this is tricky. So these are the altar candles. And who knew that you put a taper 
in this spring-loaded mechanism and drop it down into the tube. So the price for the taper replacements, they come in by the dozen. So how much for a dozen taper replacements? Oh, all right, wait a minute. Well, I have one with 1995. Okay. I was fascinated when I was trying to take a picture of this that that's how it actually worked. <laughs> All right. Everyone got their guess? I have no idea. Shar, you got your guess? I do. Okay, what do you think? Minus 25. All right, the actual price is 39. <gasps> Point for Char. Okay, next item. Oh, I love this game. <laughs> Did you know what these are? Yes, I do. Those are the candle holders. <laughs> okay, they come by the hundred. So what is the price <laughs> for a hundred candle holders? All right, we'll ready? See. What do you got? Is this on Amazon or? <laughs> <laughs> That's 29 on mine. All right, the actual so price nice. is. Oh. <laughs> Ah, we're getting ripped off. <laughs> Actually, what were, these candles. <laughs> so what with the Char, what did you have for this one? I had $79. Oh, so Whoops. Dennis gets that one. Yeah. Yes. Point for Dennis. In the lead. Turns out more than ten dollars. That's yeah. a lot of plastic. <laughs> so now you need <laughs> candles to go into <laughs> these plastic <laughs> holders. Holy and they come God. in a case of two fifty. Well, we need to know this for budget preparation now. <laughs> yes, this you is do. very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think a case of 250 costs? All right, you got your guess? All right. All right, what do you got? 39. Ooh, the actual price is 47. <laughs> Sharp. What did Char have? I had 19. I just couldn't imagine I'd be that oh, wow. Wait for Dennis. Dennis. Clearing <laughs> up. Dennis. <laughs> All right. What's the next one? Uh, the new folding chairs. Ooh. Bulk. Individual price. Wow. We got a lot of these lit. So what do we got? <laughs> I'm changing mine. Then. We just <laughs> oh 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 shark. Yeah. Oh, the four per chair. Nope, nope. I didn't. Sorry, I didn't. didn't Forty nine, thirty four. And the actual price is forty. Oh, point for Jim. Jim, Jim, <laughs> claw back in. <laughs> I have purchased a chair before. <laughs> <laughs> then you might have a easier time with the next one. This is the tall tables that you stand at. All right, everyone got their guess? All right. All right, what do you have? 69. Oh Whoa. no! <laughs> 68. <laughs> and the actual price? <gasps> oh, no. that is by a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well bid, good sir. Well bid. All right, the next one? Yeah, oh, long man. table. I love these questions. Okay, what do you got? 129. Oh, 98, 239. Oh. <laughs> oh, Dennis is dialed in. Boom. <laughs> Under a second piece of paper. Uh oh. And it's <laughs> the next item a case of copy paper. We go oh. through a lot of this in um, the charge. Hang on a minute. All right. I'm good. All got right. a number? I got a number. Okay. <laughs> What do you got? 
Oh. Oh. 50, 55. Woo! Oh. With a tie. Got to split a point. Oh, I no, guess we're both over, so we're done. You're both over. No one gets right. That's right. All righty. Good work, Debbie Mason. <laughs> that is the last of our our items for sale. Thank you for playing. That was good. All right. You're gonna have Absolutely. the organ in there or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know that stuff now. I'm going to put a picture of the sanctuary ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. That, there you go. What does that cost? Amazing work. Well, I want to thank you all for playing and thank you for joining the fun. I hope it was fun for you guys too. Um, it was great. I hope those at home were closer than, than I was. Oh. <laughs>
Rachel? Boys, Boys and Girls Club? That's correct. Oh, of oh. course. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. Are you all know this one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bread and roses. <laughs> yeah. Gavin got Sorry, it. I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> Gavin, Gavin's all in. That's Bread and roses. <laughs> that's a new logo. That one was hard. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here we go. Hmm. We've heard this one before. Lazarus House. No. Robin. Oh. Reunities together. That's it. Excellent. Yeah. Ah, ah. <laughs> if I keep good. guessing the same one every time, I'll get it right sooner or later. Well, you gotta can't get that one again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Rachel. Uh, that's Heifer International. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Where can I Rachel, go? you've been studying. <laughs> but it, it helps to have been on world service and also um, summer of service, which we actually visited. So, yeah, I do have a, yeah, that helps, I think. <laughs> okay, here we go. Ooh, oh, uh, Wells Bridge Hope, maybe. That's it. That's oh, what I good could one. Do. Yeah, good job, Gavin. Good one. That's great, Gavin. I, I should I should know that one. That was, that was BA's on for that. For, for <laughs> <There you go>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, I know that one. Rachel. That's Lazarus' house. That's correct. Third time's a charm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can't guess that one again. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Ooh, this one's challenging. This is a new one this year. Boy, I don't have a clue. Um, I think I know, but I can't think. Um, uh, Gavin, I'm I'm just guessing that the rainbow colors has to do with um, what is that? The uh, the sanctuary, the uh, LGBT asylum, maybe. Yeah, very good. The total guess. Oh, oh wow. that that was a hard one. one. Well done, Gavin. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to mute you now. Are <laughs> <laughs> you having trouble with your sound? What? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. This is a tough one. It's a little fuzzy. Mm. It, is a little fuzzy. Well, uh, it looks like food. Yeah. And I'm trying. And, and, but it's not neighbors in need. And we've already seen bread and roses. roses yeah, it's food. Other would it this be? This one is a mission partner collection. Okay, mission partner collection. <clears throat> mm. Is it is it like um, local or is it overseas? It's local in Boston. Oh, is it is it Rosie's place? No. no. It's run by a very young person. Oh. 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 Thank you for that. I think I know. Great. Is it yeah. is it Liam's lunches? Exactly. It is ah. Liam. Good job. <laughs> and last last clue. Uh. Gavin. Uh, Habitat for Humanity? That's it. Yeah. Way to go, Kevin. <laughs> Woo! Good job, everybody. We've been away from this for a while. You did great <laughs> picking up on what we used to give our money to. Wow. <clears throat> but it's hard to see them without without the, without the words. Yeah, it does make a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and several of the ones you mentioned, we couldn't use because their logo is just words. Yeah. Wow. So, um, well, I really appreciate you playing and joining us for this telethon. Um, to everybody watching, if you're enjoying seeing our friends coming together this evening, 
I hope you will consider logging into southchurch.com slash raise the roof and making a donation to fix the place we missed. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you, everybody. There are three ways to donate to the Sanctuary Repair. You can give by phone by calling 978-494-0827. If you get our answering machine, leave your name and number and we'll call you right back. You can donate online by going to southchurch.com slash raise the roof and click on the Donate Now button. You can also text Give to South Church, space ceiling, to 73256. Thank you for considering this worthy cause. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Pastor Jeopardy. Tonight's contestants are Dana Allen Walsh and Alex Shea Will. The theme of these contestants are pastors that have three worded names. Uh, it's true. That's how you seem important. For tonight's game, when you believe you know the answer, please raise your hand quickly so we can give you a chance to answer. Perfect. What you didn't know when you signed up this evening is every dollar amount that you lose, you actually will be donating to our Raise the Roof fundraiser. All right, time to talk to Sean. Good luck. We might have a capital campaign for my rent then, um, depending on how this goes. <laughs> Good luck, contestant. You're, you're saving all that gas money. You're fine. Just See, they're, never gonna, money. they're gonna fail. <laughs> Tonight's categories are. Sayeth the Bible, food and drink in the Bible, books of the Bible, women of the Bible, King James Bible common words, and biblical films. Dana, we're going to start with you, and what category would you like to start with? I just want to say, I've been out of seminary longer than Alex. Like, oh, if here we go. Me, if you had gotten me 15 years ago, I would here be honest. Now I... Yeah, I'm a little rusty. Before we even started recording, this is like the fifth thing she's added in the list of them. So, all right, we get it. We get we'll it. See. All right, Let's Dana. Let's start. Okay. All right, I'm going to go with Women in the Bible for 300, please. Okay. The festival honors Esther, a Jewish queen of Persia, who saved Jews from the Hawaiian, from the plotting of the evil Haman. Alex. What is Purim? Ding, 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 ding. David, did you know that one? Yes, I did. All right. Okay, Alex. Um, let, let's say, same category, 400. Hannah was the mother of this judge and prophet with a first and second book to his name. Alex. Who is Samuel? Good work. Awesome. Alex, again. I'm going 500. I'm on a roll. Same category. There we go. In Acts. After Tabitha dies, this early Christian leader brings her back to life. Dana. Peter. Who is Peter? That is good. You guys are doing great. Dana. Who is Peter? Um, let's see. Oh, goodness. Um, let's do books of the Bible for 400. Go in those big categories. No. The Bible book named for this woman is read during Shabbat, the holiday observed 50 days after Passover. Alex? What is Ruth? Nice. It's funny that we just got these Jewish holidays back to back. I know. All right, um, same category, 500. 
It's the second book of the Bible. Head out. Alex. <laughs> what is Exodus? All right. Same category. Danny, you got to catch up. You got to get faster here. Um, <laughs> what is... It's okay. Same category, 300. Okay. In the fourth chapter of this book, Peter and John are imprisoned in Jerusalem for preaching the gospel. Acts. What is Acts? Who is Acts? What is Acts? <laughs> <laughs> All the answers. All the right. Answers. What? Ruth, Nana. Catching up. What's next? Um, let's like throw it. I'm curious about King James Bible comment. <laughs> I know nothing. We're exhausting not all the ones we think we know. So if it's not the 23rd Psalm in King James, I don't know it. So let's okay. do 200, please. Okay. There's no nudity in the King James <laughs> Bible, but this three syllable synonym appears 32 times just in Leviticus. Oh my gosh. I, okay. <laughs> Send them for new. I, I really don't know. I don't know. You got stuck with guess? Do we lose points if I guess? Yeah. I'm not you guessing. Do. Yeah, I, I don't know. Nick, that was my. Oh, why didn't I say it? Oh! <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I got to trust my instinct. That's what that means. Okay, Alex. Um, who was last? Dana? Dana. Yeah. Go again. All right. Um, I'm going to stick with this. King James for 300. Okay. This city gets lots of play from Joshua 10 through Revelations 21. Dana, what is Jerusalem? Oh. I didn't get the clue. Okay, that was good, Dana. Dana? Um, all right, I'm just going to stick with King James Reformed. It. Look, this frequent synonym for look comes before virgin shall conceive. Alex? What is low? No! Oh, hey, you need to give me a chance to guess. I was going to say behold. Uh, I'm give it to her. totally going to say behold. Uh, I'd say no, give it to her. You lose points, Alex. And then lose points? <sighs> All right, I guess All right. I was... King Dana, she got those points, though. She, um, she... I, I, would, I would think that she would know behold. Alex, she's right behind you with 1,100. No pressure. Thou wilt not fail to know this old synonym for will that occurs in nine of ten commandments. What is shalt or shall? Whoa, 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 whoa. Shalt or shall? Yeah, it depends. It's the same thing, like, depending on, it's, please, don't get technical <laughs> one letter here. Because you're, like, I'm back. You're okay. Now. Okay, all right. You're okay. 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 Uh, Let's see. Are we allowed? Hold on. I need a rule clarification. Oh, my. No. Are we allowed to raise our hand before the question is finished? No. All right. We've been doing that. I've been doing it, too. No, okay. I don't care. Just Allison's the judge. She'll make the final decision. Allison, so the rule? the rule typically is in jeopardy that you have to wait till the question is complete okay. before you ring in. Okay. All right, good. Because I've been breaking it myself. I've got my strength mug. With a Bible verse on it, so yeah. And what's in the mug? It's not working. What's in the mug? It's not working. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Dana. Uh, say it the Bible for three hundred, please. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, for the time is at hand. Is in this Bible book, Alex. What is Revelation? Good work. All right. Um, let's stay there at 400. Okay. Are we sticking with the King James over here? Oh. <laughs> Matthew 25, 35. When I, was in when I was in hungry, you gave me something to eat. And when I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink, when I was this, you welcomed me. Alex. What is a stranger? 
Nice. Oh. Uh, my points back. <laughs> I know. No fair. I okay. Sorry. I was gonna. It's okay. Go ahead, Alex. Let's say five hundred. Okay. In Exodus, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's. This, we, he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. Hmm. I have a guess, but I'm not losing points, so I'm not saying it. Wow. <laughs> this is for 500? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a guess either. It's not worth it. Okay, we'll skip it. Oh, you're not going to tell us the answer? Oh! That Wait, I was going to say the, the crossing the Red Sea, so pass it. Sure yeah. you were. Okay. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to risk it, though, because the sacrifice of the Lord's was weird. But anyway. Yeah, that, yeah, it was a hard one. Okay, Alex. Um, let's go same category, 200. Okay. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water this. Dana, wine. Of course she knew that answer. <laughs> it is so close, Dana. Okay. <laughs> All right, Dana. Okay. Um, books of the Bible for 200, please. St. John experienced this in a cave on the Isle of Patmos and is said to have written the Bible book of the same name there. Dana. Dana what? broke the rules. She raised your hand before the question. I was, was waiting until the very end. end. No, you did not. It went up. I watched, but you can have it. <laughs> what is Revelation? Just a quick note. I accidentally gave Alex the 200 points Dana won on this question. Despite Alex claiming shenanigans, I'll fix the score in about a minute. What is Revelation? All right. Things are only going to get worse from here. I'm watching. I, I know. Like, the competition is heating up, and I can't tell you one thing about a biblical film, so this will get interesting. <laughs> I don't think I can either. <laughs> I know. Well, women of the Bible for 200, please. Okay. In Luke 2, Simone tells her that child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. Um, I know. You don't know this, Alex? I feel like I do. This is, uh, this, this is a story that's told every year after Christmas, the one we never preach because we have off. Um... <laughs> We gotta ask a seminary student. They definitely know this text. They probably teach preach. I, uh, I know it. I think I do. I just don't want to get it wrong and lose points. Yeah, I could tell you the whole context. I can't think of the name. Okay, are we passing? I'm passing. I'm passing. Right. Okay. Oh, it's just Mary. Okay. Hey, I think I made a scoring error because I think I gave Alex Dana's last two hundred points. Okay. So I'm, I'm gonna take. I'll, I'll edit this out, but I gotta take two. I'm gonna take 200 away from you, Alex, and add 200 to Dana. Sorry about that. I'll I'll verify with the tape of sure, but that's. I think that's what happened last. Um, All right. Well, I'm gonna hide my shock for the edit. Uh, oh, sorry. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's all good, Wayne. Thanks. <laughs> uh, actually... Okay, Dana. All right. Um, food and drink in the Bible for 200. Okay. Part of John the Baptist's unusual diet were these which some think are insects and others believe to be beans. Dana. Oh. He's indignant over there. I Alex am. knew it too. It's all right. Uh, food and drink of the Bible for 300, please. Okay. An angel gives Elijah an amazing cake that sustains him on a 40 day journey to this peak where he meets God in a cave. Dana, Mount Sinai. What is Mount Sinai? I think. Oh, it's right. Wow. Ooh. Okay. Dana. Food and drink in the Bible for 400, please. 
In the King James Version, these two words complete Luke 11.3. Give us day by day our... Dana. I'm trying. I know Alex is getting so pissed at me over there. No, no. What, is, <laughs> what is our daily bread? We Who really need that? to go back to church, Alex. That was 400? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Who did drink in the Bible for 500? Okay. I'm answering no matter what. <laughs> a painting by Nicholas Poston shows the Israelites gathering this food that was provided from heaven in the wilderness. Alex. I what, is, <laughs> what is manna? I needed that so bad. You did. If you had, if you you had told, really did. Well, no really, my hand was up, but it's okay. Allison felt bad for you, so she... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just okay, um, Alex. Earlier. Let's go biblical films for 500. Okay. <laughs> Jewish leader Moses in Exodus, Gods and Kings was played by this actor with a different faith-based first name. Are we passing? passing? Christian Bale. Oh, good clue though. Good clue. Good clue. All right, 400. In 2018, Rooney Mara played this alliterative follower of Jesus. Alex. Who is Mary Magdalene? Nice. Ooh. I have no idea what that was in, but the alliteration. She looks like her, makes sense. <laughs> How about 300? Okay. Oh, oh no, you're catching up with the biblical films. <laughs> About seven foot tall, pro wrestler Walter Talon played this role in 1951's David and Bathsheba. I don't know if I said that right. Guess you need to know that story. Yeah, but who? Oh, yeah. Alex. Um, who is or what is Goliath? Yeah. Nice. That was a good guess. All right. Yeah, I was like, Dana. not part of their story, right. but. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 200. Okay. <clears throat> the Parted Red Sea in the 1923 silent epic was created by using two blocks of blue gelatin. Uh, what's the name of that old movie everyone likes? Uh, uh, I've got a guess about it. How far behind am I? Oh. You need it. I'm just taking it from you. Alex. Um, what is... The Ten Commandments. That's what I was going to guess. All right, you're probably going to get it. Oh, I should have said that. I've never seen that movie. I've never seen it either. But... It's that old, though? Yeah. Wow. All right. Um, all right, let's just go um, same, same category, 100. In the Bible, John Huston, the film's director, also plays this architect. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Alex. Um, who is uh, Noah? Dang, what'd you just give up over there? What's going on? <laughs> hey, no, I, 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 we I, still I, have I, Final Jeopardy. I don't know anything about films, and yeah, I'm like afraid to guess, even though it's something I just literally wrote a whole piece for the church on Noah. But anyway, <laughs> okay, Alex, I really did like just yesterday. Anyway, Common Words 100. This conjunction begins many a sentence, including verses 2 through 26 of Genesis. Are we passing? And. and? Oh, I'll begin with and? I, I guess I could just guess the conjunction. There, you okay. know, there aren't that many, I don't think, right? So. Okay. All right, now, 100 women of the Bible. This queen arrives in Jerusalem packing spices, gold, and gems, and sets out to test the wisdom of King Solomon. No guesses? No guesses. Oh. Alex? Uh, no, nah, I'm just going to waste your time. Okay. Sheba. Yeah, the Queen of Sheba. Of course. <coughs> I like how you don't get the 100 ones. That's really embarrassing. Okay. Would you say? Uh, it was just one of those that was so obvious. I just never talk about that. Okay. Yeah, um, that, books of the I Bible guess. 100. Verses like the, sh I don't know how to say it, Shumites, were three score and 4,400 explain this book's name. 
Oh, Alex, I'm gonna have to say, what is numbers? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there you go, Alex. Was it numbers that you did your own personal Bible study of like two summers ago? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Because I'm insane. Okay. Right. Nobody studies numbers. Okay. Yeah, no. Um, food and drink, 100. You know what? It paid off, though, in getting that one correct. So, In Exodus, God says he wants to take the Israelites unto a land flowing with this pain. Dana. Milk and honey. What is milk and honey? Finally. Okay. Last question. God reveals in Genesis, neither shall there any more be a this to destroy the earth. Alex. What is a flood? There we go. In that last hundred. So that heading was... into final jeopardy, Dana's at 3,000 and Alex is at oh, 1,600. Biblical films did me in. All right, here we go. What's the category? The category is South Church Pastors. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, man. I hope this is some trivia about Alex cause, or something. <laughs> okay, I have my amount. Dana, do you have your amount? Yep. Okay. Here we go. Okay, the fifth pastor of South Church, Lorenzo Longstroth, was famously credited for the discovery of this, which led to the modern day beehives. Ooh, Dana's writing furiously on her little post-it. Alex is calm. Confused. Dana Confused. was gonna do a sabbatical on bees. She's trying to get a grant on it. You gotta write something, Alex. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Just can't think of a particular name or word for this, but I'm going to try. All right. Okay, let me know when you're ready, Alex. Oh, I have no idea. So I just wrote something. Oh. Okay, uh, Dana, you're going in with 3,000. Would you like to share your answer and how much you wagered? I wagered it all because I'm, I'm going on faith here. So my, I'm going to say, what is the distance apart of the sliding screens in the drawers for the beekeeping? The bee space. Ding, 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 ding. That's correct. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Alex, $3,600, my friend. What did we wager and what is your answer? My answer was honeycomb, which is wrong. Because <laughs> this question's ridiculous. <laughs> and I wagered $1,500. Oh. All right, Alex, how much are you donating to the ceiling now? I'm excited about this. Mm. We might have covered our gap, actually. Yes, I, I think yeah. we might have. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot believe I lost on a question about bees. <laughs> it's so great. I, I love it. I love it. So, oh. Dana, you won $6,000. Awesome. Congratulations. You wow. earned your salary for the rest of the year. That's good. That's sweet. I'm glad. Getting paid is a good thing. I'd yeah. like the record to show that um, Dana lost on the Bible questions and won because of a B question. Okay, let me just say that I was ahead until we got to biblical films. Okay, <laughs> this and is all true. This is all true. I don't, I don't do biblical films. Okay, you on the other hand, during the pandemic, have watched all of Netflix, so you like don't have any more Netflix to watch. So. I don't just have time for TV, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right, I will yeah. let my better angel prevail and say congratulations. <laughs> Perfect. Well, <laughs> thank you both so much for playing our Pastor Jeopardy game. And we just wanted to remind everybody that you are <laughs> welcome.
<laughs> to donate to our Raise the Roof Telethon. And when we can fix it, we can see these two beautiful people again live. So thank you again and have a great night. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Kathleen. Thank Thanks, you. Kathleen. Thanks, yeah. everyone. That was thank fun. Thank you, Wayne and Allison. Thanks for joining and watching us. Yeah, thank you. The B space. And for the record, apparently other people here knew about the B space. I have never heard of the B space. I will never forget the B space. I can be a sore loser, but I will congratulate you, Dana. You did a good job. It was a hard fought win. I may have known a few more things about the Bible, but I suppose in the grand scheme of things, you won and that's what counts. <laughs> it was a great time to do Pastor Jeopardy. All the games tonight have been sensational. They've been funny, they've been heartfelt, they've been engaging. A testament to the community we have together and the fun we can have together, even when we are separated by distance through the wonders of technology. I wanna thank all of you for being a part of tonight, for being a part of our games, for testimonies, of course, for your time tonight and for your generosity. I wanna show you where we are at currently with our total and what your generosity has brought us so far. So let's take a look at that number. 37,925. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Thank you so much. In just a couple hours, we were able to raise that amount of money. But don't worry, if you would like to give uh, again, or you haven't had a chance to give yet, maybe you're just tuned in for us, or maybe you're going to be watching this at some point in the future and you want to give, don't worry. There's still an opportunity to support this project and helping make sure this space is one in which many generations come can make memories in. You can call the number that we have. Um, it probably is appearing on the screen right now as you are looking. You can call that number. If no one picks up, that is okay. Leave a message. We promise we will get back to you and your pledge, your contribution will count towards this. So please consider being prayerful over the coming days and weeks if you have yet to make a contribution. If you know folks in the church or in our community who uh, value our building in the town of Andover, our space, please invite them to make a contribution too. Um, we can still accept those um, for the weeks to come. I want to invite you before we close in prayer to help me have a big thank you for everyone who helped make this happen. Wayne and Allison Shaw and Kathleen Curry specifically, thank you and so many others who are here tonight, Ted Harris and Lucas and um, Erica and Rachel and Sam and Amelia and did I leave anyone out? I think, I think I most got everyone who's here tonight. A lot of people put a lot of time into making this possible. So thank you um, to those of you who helped make this happen. Thank you for giving of your time and your talent and treasure um, in light of their hard work. And of course, thank you for your generosity. As we get ready to close, I want to invite you to be in prayer with me. Good and gracious God, I give you thanks for the memories we've made tonight for all the people who have given of their time, of their talent, and of their treasure to help repair this place in which we call home, this place we love. Oh God, we have been separated from it in ways we could never have imagined six months, a year ago. But we know that eventually you will bring us home here and we give you thanks of the generosity of our congregation that will allow us to come back to one that is beautiful and safe. I ask that you might help us in our generosity, that you might move in us to be even more generous, to help close this gap. But I thank you for everyone who has given. I thank you for the ways you've connected us during this evening. And I pray that you will continue to help us be good stewards of all you give us. We thank you, God, this night for all you do. And we give thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen everyone for an amazing night. Don't forget to share that phone number. If you haven't donated or pledged yet, be sure to give us a call and let us know um, what you would like to pledge. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you sometime in person soon. Go in peace. Good night.
know, I do have a master's degree in this. It's kind of too bad. I can't use put it to good use, but all right, here we go. How'd I do? Oh, thanks. <laughs>